Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and today we're going to be unboxing this. It's the Calsonic Skyline GTR in 124th scale by Tamiya. Specifically this is the 1996 car used by Team Impel, sponsored by Calsonic in the Japanese Grand Touring Car Championship, which later became Super GT. So you can see it's got a nice illustrated picture on the front here. Got uh, above shots, uh, one with the roof section taken out, front, back and side here, and the same picture on this side. And we'll open it up and take a look inside. So we've got the instructions and the tech tips as you'd expect. Decals here, chrome sprue, tires, the bodywork here and tyre decals, it's moulded in blue so you could leave it unpainted, clear sprues, other blue sprues and a metallic grey sprue. The Japanese GT car championships were inaugurated in 1993 and are becoming more popular with motorsports buffs throughout Japan. In addition to the highly modified Japanese cars, the supercars of Europe like Ferrari, Lamborghini and Porsche vie for the title. The Calsonic Skyline GTR, developed from Nissan Skyline, has been one of the principal contenders in the JGTC since its inauguration. Packed into the GTR lookalike body shell was Nissan's latest racing technology, its 2568cc inline six cylinder engine with twin turbochargers produce an awesome 450 horsepower. The X Track developed sequential six speed gearbox efficiently transmitted this engine's awesome power to the rear wheels. The four-wheel double wishbone suspension system has almost the same construction as Nissan's highly competitive Group C machines raced during the 1980s. The body shell was extensively modified to obtain even better aerodynamics. Additional air intakes, outlets and oversized fenders gave its massive silhouette and even more aggressive appearance. During the 1996 season, one GTR competed in the JGTC under the sponsorship of Calsonic, a Japanese manufacturer of car radiator components. Painted in its distinctive overall blue colour scheme, the Calsonic Skyline GTR fully displayed its outstanding performance to the Japanese motorsport fans throughout the season. The car had won the 1995 season here displaying the number one. However, a new rival in the form of the McLaren F1 GTR appeared in the 1996 season, which went on to take the title. However, Team Impulse still race under Calsonic sponsorship to this day in what is now known as the Super GT, and Team Impul actually won the championship overall in 2022. The clips here show round four of the championship in 1996, where this very car took its only win of the season. Drivers Hoshino and Kagiyama here talking and receiving their prizes on the top step of the podium. So now we look through the instructions. Got paint suggestions here. And it starts with the undercarriage. Moving up into the interior. Completing the interior here. Then you've got the bodywork here. There are some parts which need to be removed from the bodywork, such as a little section around the headlights at the front, and then combining the bodywork with the chassis. And you've got decal instructions here. So as I said before, many of these sprues are molded in blue plastic, so you could leave them unpainted if you wanted to. Got a section here that's been removed. Got the front bumper and headlights. Got some wing parts here. Some of these parts are optional or just won't be used as this kit was originally based on the 1995 car. 
and then modified for the 1996 release. Some things like the diffuser won't be used in this version of the kit, but you could add it if you wanted to. So you've also got this foil piece here, which will go around the side pipe exhaust. Got another blue sprue here. This one has got lots of roll cage parts and other interior. We've got the dashboard, for instance, got the uh, rear section of the uh, interior. There are the roll cage sections. We've got the seat as well. There's some extra parts which you could attach wiring to should you want to. Steering wheel here and a different version of the spoiler used on an earlier version of the car. But pretty nicely molded, no flash to speak of. So we've got the metallic grey sprue here. These uh, parts on the side which have uh, come off, don't know where those come from, or what they are used for either. We you see you've got the uh, floor of the car, the interior tub and uh, the underside here which uh, does need to be painted blue, uh, so a little bit of extra work there. You've got the underside of the inline six cylinder engine. You've got some suspension parts, uh, the door cards here, um, exhaust parts, uh, disc brakes. Uh, so yeah, quite nice that these are painted in, molded I should say, in this silver color. Okay, we've got clear sprue here. So we've got uh, the uh, undercarriage protection here, which is clear, so you can see detail underneath should you want to leave it like that. And then the windows are in several sections. Six windows to uh, be truthful. You've got the rear there, the front one, and then four sides. And you've also got the four tail lights on this one and the two headlights. Yeah, nicely molded. So we've got the chrome sprue here. It's quite nicely, sort of mildly chromed. Got the four wheels, which are all the same. Then you've got some uh, radiator parts, uh, wing supports, uh, mirrors, things like that. Which is pretty good. I think a bit of black panel line would pick out some of the details in those radiators. Then we've got the body here. As I said before, all moulded in blue. Unfortunately, there is some uh, sort of swirl marks in the plastic there. And also you've got these strange reverse decals for the Bridgestone Potenza tyres. So you can see there some parts which need to be added on, such as the fuel filler cap in the back. You've got some vents which will need um, parts glued from the inside. And of course, it's got no front bumper at the moment. Some mild mold seams, but not too bad. It's just a little bit of sanding will be needed at the beginning of making this. So we've got the tires here, unusually for GT tires, all four are the same. You sometimes get ones where the rears are slightly larger than the front. There we are, these are quite nice. You could weather them if you wanted to. And we've also got some poly caps in here. As well as the poly caps, you've also got separate central locking wheel nuts, which isn't a feature that I've seen on Tamir kits before. So here we've got the water slide decals, you've got two sheets here. So you've got the smaller one here, which has got some bright colors. You've got things like the uh, Kevlar for the back of the seat. You've got these uh, headlight decals, the uh, sunstrip, seat belts, vents, things like that. Also got these little bonnet clips, which I'm not a big fan of. I just think they look a bit silly, but some people use them, that's fine. 
Then we've got the larger decal sheet, which is mainly white and black. You've got lots of Carl Sonic logos here. And number one to go on the uh, doors, roof, bonnet, and the rear. Bridgestone decals and some other logos, such as Impul, things like that. Normal to me quality, they look to be printed very nicely. I'm going to be using TS44 Brilliant Blue, which is the recommended colour from Tamiya for this. Uh, they don't do this in a jar, however you can get uh, it uh, from companies like Zero Paints if you use an airbrush. I'm also going to be using these Edouard Photo Etch seat belts. These are six point harness uh, sabelt ones. All of these are photo etch and they're painted. You've got instructions on the other side. Be really looking forward to seeing how these uh, look in the finished model. You can get these in other colors or other brands. So there we have it. This should have been my final build of 2022. However, I was a bit waylaid and uh, I have now finished it in January. So it will be my next build video up. Thank you very much for watching. Please do leave a comment down below if you've made this. Like, share and subscribe and I'll see you soon.